Bouillon. Good evening. Welcome to Let's Talk Real Estate. Yay! This is where we come together at once a month to talk about how to, how to use real estate as a wealth creation tool. I am your host, uh, Dexter B. Jenkins, and we are uh, at the studio in Kent, Massachusetts of uh, New England Christian Television Network. So we want to thank them for allowing us to use their studio. Uh, and it, yay! And, uh, Eddie will, uh, President Eddie Jules will put up a QR code there, but uh, you know, we, if, if this network has been a blessing to you like it has been to us, we encourage you to sow a seed into it because if you know anything about business, it takes some money <laughs> to run it. And so we thank God for him and thank God for this network. So tonight is no different. Uh, usually we, I have a guest. Uh, I think I did, I think when we first started, we, we started this meetup in March of 2022. It's been a year and some change already. Um, and so what we were doing was, the goal was to bring people together once a month, once a month to really talk about what, what does it take to build wealth and then using real estate as a wealth creation tool. And so what we've done is we brought in a number of experts uh, in the Massachusetts area, and actually Massachusetts and Rhode Island into uh, this session. And then what I kept hearing is people said, what are you going to teach? And so tonight's my night to teach. <laughs> so I'm going to teach a short lesson on um, the SHIP method. Um, if, if you follow me at all, you know, part of what, what I've done over the last, oh, my God, three decades at this, this point, I know I don't look that old, but it's, I am in my 50s. And, um, you know, I spent 20 years selling life insurance and investments, so on and so forth. And then since 2016, my wife and I have been actively involved in real estate. And so what I see is, uh, so I tell, and then I've been a senior pastor since 2012, and so I tell people that if you look in the dictionary, um, you will find my picture there at the intersection of faith, finance, and business. <laughs> right there, that's my face. Because that's where I've lived over the, over the last uh, 30, 30, like I said, three, three, three plus 10, uh, three decades at this point. And so, that's where I'm at. So what I want to do tonight is really do a quick review of what has happened in our, in our group. Uh, matter of fact, you know what? I should go into my session first, and then I'll team. You know what? I'll do that. Yeah. So that's what I want to do. So what I'm going to do is, see, the great thing about live TV, you just have to be on your feet. So y'all just got to follow me tonight. And I know a number of you uh, called me, actually texted me, and said you couldn't make tonight. So we, I know we got a, a great audience out there who's checking, checking us out on the network. And then obviously we showed this on YouTube later on and so uh but you'll see that a lot of people will see this and so this it will be a good session for a lot of people but i'm i'm basing everything that we do and i'm talking to our live audience and y'all are just sort of hanging out with us um i'm basing everything we do based off this something that i'm calling the ship method um so if you've ever uh followed me on any on any level this is what I found in, in over three decades of studying wealth, uh, and my handwriting isn't all that good. I always, my mother said to me, "Boy, you should, you should, you should have better handwriting." 
And this is what I said to her, Monica. I said, as long as they can sign, as long as I can sign checks, it'll be all right. <laughs> Little did I know I'd be in front of people writing Eric, and I'm like, I should have, I should have listened to her. <laughs> ah, but if you can't see that, uh, they, they can, if you may not be able to see it, but it's, and they're actually, we're going to throw some stuff up there, and we're talking about the ship method. Now, the, the ship method, S-H-I-P, my wife said, make sure you spell that, because it could be something I'm saying something else. The ship method, S-H-I-P, uh, is, is what I found that over, th and, and like I said, in studying wealth in over three decades, is, is, is the common de denominator that I don't care, I don't care who's talking, what they're talking about, you'll, you'll, you'll hit these three points. And so the first point is this. The first point is stewardship. Okay? So the first ship is stewardship. The second ship is ownership. And then the last one is entrepreneurship. T-R-E-P-R-E-N-E-U-R, -E -E I think, something like that. It's long. <laughs> so, so whether you read the Bible, whether you read, um, oh my God, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, some stuff by Robert Kiyosaki, whether you read uh, Think and Grow Rich, all of the authors who, who you, you, that, she, that you hear about will always, they will always hit one, two, or three of these. And so we're looking at, if we want to become wealthy, I call the ship method, you got to write this down in your notes, I call it the secret sauce to building wealth. Now, what do we know about secret sauces? Secret sauces are very simple. That's what they are. If, if you ever listen to, uh, I'm, I'm thinking about, I can't say the name of, of the chicken place, but you all would know it. Yeah. They would say, we got X, Y, Z, herbs and spices, uh -huh. right? Well, that's their secret sauce, the Big Mac. If you know who makes that. They have what? A secret sauce. So everybody has a secret sauce, and what you'll find is that the secret sauce is always very simple. Now, the thing is this, when it comes to building wealth, the reason why we want to know how, what the secret sauce is, is because 95% of the people who end up working from, say, 25 to, say, 65 or 70 re retire broke. Now, now, you know this, but from probably from your experience of people in your own life who, man, they, they busted their behind and they worked hard, and then they taught us to work hard. So nothing wrong with working hard, but you know what's better than working hard is working smart and walking, working intelligently. And so as we're looking at the ship method, what it is is it's a way for us to, to tap into the secret sauce of building wealth. So if, if you put, yeah, I'm, I'm at least talking about, if you put two of these components together, I can't say that, I, I, I can almost say guarantee, because if you know anything about, uh, uh, you, you can't make claims. <laughs> And I got a lawyer in the room with me, so she could back me up. I can't make claims, but this is what I found. If you have two of these three working for you, you'll build wealth. Now, let's look at what stewardship is. Matter of fact, class, ask me, what is stewardship? I'm glad you guys asked me. Now, stewardship deals with this. And like I said, we're going to tie all of this into real estate. Stewardship is this. Stewardship is the skillful use of handling money. And the key word I like to say is skillful use, because uh, for the most part we weren't we weren't taught how to handle money successfully. You know, I don't know about you, but when I first got my first job when I was 12 years old, no one sat down and said, "Dexter, this is what you need to do to skillfully handle your your finances." Right? And then you think about when you first start working, and then you get your first real check, so to speak. And then now you gotta you gotta handle that, right? Uh, I was watching these guys, uh, these, 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 these professional basketball players, and if I need to na name the names, you may or may not, you may or may not know them. Eric probably would know because he, he's, a, he's a ball player uh, or in the basketball big time. But the guy said, he said, prior to me making my first NBA check, I he said the biggest check I'd ever had in my hand was $700. Then my first NBA check is worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. And nobody talked to me about taxes, no one talked to, me, talked to me about how to put together a spending plan, no one talked to me about those things. So the key is this, 
Now, maybe you and I didn't make thousands of dollars, but when we first got our first, say, the so-called big tech, maybe after high school or college, you're like, oh, shoot, what do I do with this thing? You know, we've been trained, most of our thing is let me go buy something, <laughs> not let me go put it to work. So what stewardship talks about is how can I put my money skillfully to use? Now, the the now every section really has what I call sort of like a big idea or, or a big boulder that really grounds it. And so in this one, it would be, I don't like to use the word budget, but I use the spending plan because words are very important, right? And when you say budget, most people feel like it's restrictive. But a spending plan is different because a spending plan, meaning that you're, you're telling your money what it's going to do. Have you noticed that if you don't tell your money what, it, what, it, what to do, it has its own, it has its own ideas? <laughs> that you really have to say, you know what, I'm making you go here. Because <laughs> if you don't, it's all over the place. And I think about years ago before we had direct deposit, you would get paid and then you would go cash a check maybe because we had to go physically go cash the checks back in the day. Some of y'all said, Dexter, you getting old? Yeah, I am. I had to physically cash my check. <laughs> <laughs> you had to physically go cash your check. And if you if you weren't careful, you got a check for just say just say four hundred dollars and at the end of the weekend you're like, oh my God, what is my money? Well you went to McDonald's, you did this, you did that, they get another money go. So what a spending plan does is it allows you to tell your money what it's going to do. Because if it, if you don't tell it what it's going what it needs to do, it will have a mind of its own. That makes sense? Now Spending plans, I mean, there are 10,000 of them out there. Uh, you just have to find one, and I don't like to tell you which one to use, but this is the one I, I like to use. I call it the 10, 10, 80 rule. So we talk about tithing 10%. We ain't in church, but tithing is good. <laughs> Saving at least 10%, and you really need, actually need more than that, and then living off the rest. Now you may your your plan may be different than that, but the key thing in stewardship is to have some sort of plan, some sort of where I have a sense of where my money is going. Because if I don't have a sense of where my money is going, I look up and I don't have anything. Uh, I heard a guy said this is years ago. He said all of us uh, have made more than enough money in our lifetime to be a multi multi millionaire, but the question becomes where is it? Ooh, that's good. <laughs> You're like, where is it? Well, what happens? Stewardship tells you where your money is, right? So the first one is what? Stewardship. So let's look at ownership. Now, ownership is this. Now, y'all stay with us out there in TVville. Ownership is this. Ownership is about you owning the right things. Now, all of us own stuff, right? Uh, but do we own the right things? So ownership really speaks to the fact that I've got to own things that do two things. Number one, that go up and uh, value and produce cash flow. That's ownership. Now, we, we're going to tie this into real estate, right? Because that, that's what this, is, this class is all about. So it's not all about, so it's, we tied in real estate and financial literacy all together tonight. But I want to show you how real estate really, this is really big time real estate right here. So it's about ownership. And so what gives us both um, goes up in value and gives us cash flow. As a matter of fact, flip it around in your notes. I like cash flow first. Value or another word for it is appreciation which is probably what you want to use. So ownership really speaks to the fact that I have to purchase thing that produces, number one, cash flow, two, appreciate. Got it? So I need to do two things. What? Ownership speaks to me, accumulating things that do what? Come on, class. That produces cash flow, and, and that's what we want in this thing called ownership. I want something that's going to bring me cash flow. Write this down to your notes. The most important word in business is cash flow. What's the most important word in business? Cash, cash flow. flow. What direction is it your cash flowing in? Is it flowing 
to you. <laughs> no, but that, but that's what cash, but that's what ownership speaks to. The fact that I'm hyper focused on producing, uh, p- purchasing things, uh, ownership, uh, owning things that do these two things. And so, in order for me to do that, I have to understand what this is. It's called an asset. Say asset. asset. Now, an asset. Uh, has a couple different definitions to it. Now, if you do it from a traditional banking standpoint, an asset is something that you put on a piece of paper and you, you attach a value to it. And the reason why I don't like that one, Eric, is because just because you, you list that your car is worth $10,000, that don't mean I'm going to pay you that for it. Now, it's an asset. That's what you say it's worth, but I ain't paying ten grand for that. We, we were talking prior to the show that there's a, this guy, or this person has a house on the market and they're listening for this. Well, we don't want to pay that. <laughs> we want to pay much less than that. So if he was doing a traditional uh, like uh, uh, bank statement, he would say the house is worth 325 But we we're like, we ain't paying that. <laughs> so really, I like another um, definition of asset. An asset, really, really simply, uh, is something that puts money in your pocket. If you want to, uh, that's what an asset is. An asset puts money in your what? That's what an asset is. Asset is. And that's what you want. So when this asset puts money in your pocket, it's going to produce this thing called what? Cash flow. And then over a period of time, it's going to do what? Appreciate. So your thinking has to be, if I want to be wealthy, how many of these assets do I have that produces what? Cash flow and number two, Appreciate. Now, the problem is this. You're your only asset. Boy, that's good right there. <laughs> Do you know if you are your only asset, meaning if you, if, if you don't physically go and do something, you have no what? Cash flow. So what has to happen is you and I have to become hypersensitive from now on at either doing two things because uh, assets are either, I did a video on this, uh, oh God, I think last week I put it out. Um, yeah, I did last week. Go to my YouTube channel and check it out. But anyway, <laughs> Actually, I may put it on for social media too. But, uh, oh God, what did I just, I'm joking around, I lost my train of thought. It'll come back. But it's, it's this thing of, Oh, I said, hey, it come back. Thank you. Anyway, and assets are either two things. They're either acquired or created. Right? That's what an asset is. It's either what? Acquired or created. Now, tie this into real estate. When we're talking real estate, what do we do with real estate? We acquire it. Now, creating an asset is cool, too. So just say, I know we have a couple people here, you guys in here, you guys are authors, right? So you've written a book, so you created in what? Asset. Now, the thing is this, what you have to learn how to do to make it a cash flow and asset is it's not only good enough to write it, but you got to learn how to sell it. So I heard a guy say years ago, he said, I've never claimed to be the best the best, uh, best writer, he said, I claim to be the best-selling author. So you got a great book, but ain't nobody read. <laughs> or nobody knows you to buy it. And so what happens is, uh, and I'm, I'm tying up into a whole nother class right now. You know, but, but this is for you authors who are out there, and, are in, and we got a couple authors in here that I'm in the process of writing my own book now, is this. If we want to cash flow a book or any other asset, we have to build this thing called a brand. And let me say this to you, as a real estate entrepreneur, you need to build a brand. That's why I told you guys last class is what you should start doing is when I look at your social media page, do I see pictures of cats and dogs? 
my vacation, I want my vacation, then all that. And, and that's fine because part of you building your brand, people want to sort of know a little bit about you. That's cool. But in anything in your social media, do I get a sense that you are involved in real estate? Now, I ask this question. If you look at my social media, do you get a sense that I'm involved in real estate? The answer is what? Yes. yes. Why? Because I recognize I have to build a, a brand. Now, a brand is simply what people get when they get you. That's what a brand is. You know, we make it all big. It ain't all that big, Angie. It ain't just Angela. It ain't all that big. It's like what people get when they get you. That's it. So now what happens is when um, people think about anything, now we're talking real estate tonight, and when people think real estate, do they think about you? Now, many of us are at different places. But my point being is as we're going forward, because part of what we part of tonight's session is about getting you ready for 2024, right? Positioning you to, to, to make some things happen. Many of you did some things happen in 2023. I know the internet did some things and the Perkins did some things up in back in the last year, going in this year. Um, so and they've got some people out there in the audience who are out there watching us on TV who I know they did some things this year. And so we're sort of celebrating what we did last year, but really getting ready for, for next year. But what I always say, one of the things you got to do going into 2024 is begin to let, or as I said last week, last month we were together, we had uh, Robert Nichols was, but I was our guest last week. And we were talking about the fact that you should document your journey. That's easy, because people, people think about, they, they complicate, well, well, okay, Dexter, if you want me to use social media, what do I need to do? Well, document what you're doing. Well, I'm not doing much. You here tonight, <laughs> right? You could, uh, Sister Angela already did it. You could, you could, you could take a picture. Of her, click, click, click. I'm over here at this meetup, learning about real estate investing. You post on your social media. You know how many people see that, right? So let people know you can't be a secret agent because I, I, the, the biggest thing that I hear people say is, "Well, Dexter, I don't know enough." Well, let me say this: you know more than them. You know more than them because you, now if you've been hanging around this class for a year or so, you, you, know more, you know more than you think you know. And all you have to do to be better than the people who, who aren't doing nothing is be one or two steps ahead of them, which you are. I'm just one or two steps ahead of you. And I, and I got people who, uh, uh, you, you, many of you came to our conference in April, uh, and I got mentors. Uh, one of my friends, Tommy Jones, he did 300 flips. I ain't did no 300 flips. I haven't been doing this long enough. I haven't been in the game long enough to even do 300 flips. So I'm, I don't try to compete with him, but I've done more than y'all. <laughs> and so since I've done more than you, I can mentor you all getting started. But so as I am ahead of you, but I'm also looking and learning from people who have done more than me. Right? That, let me give you a tip. That's why. And I just let y'all hang out with us. Because <laughs> after that, I want to learn what they know, right? So let me interview somebody who do more than me. Y'all come hang out. Let's watch us talk. And I'm taking notes, and I go back and watch it later. And be like, duh, 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 duh. So that's a hack for you. One of the things you want to do, if, if you want to grow in any area, go start interviewing people. Just, hey, look, man, I see what you're doing. Or it could be a woman, I see what you're doing. Can I sit down with you for 15 minutes? And, and, and most people are gracious enough to give you 15 minutes and they, they could talk about their sex, their, their success, and it will help you out. But here, ownership. Say what? Ownership. ownership. Listen, we've got to be ownership minded. I was talking to somebody today, or maybe I was, I was thinking about it, and I was thinking about in particular about real estate, and I was thinking about uh, you know, what's going on in a, in a lot of our communities. Where, and I was talking about, and I was many of you guys know that I'm a senior pastor, and uh, you know, lately I've been getting questions about why is the senior pastor so involved in finance? Mm -hmm. And I was saying, well, you know, uh, <laughs> well, I grew up around it, but this is what I found out is that when we first started our church in 2012, I'm preaching on going to heaven, but then people losing their houses. Now, I'm preaching on people going to heaven and praying and all that, but then I'm seeing 
that all this building is going on around us. And so while we're talking, when we all get to heaven, the people around us are buying up our property. So I got to get those around me, what? Ownership minded. So that when you're ownership minded, you're going to purchase this. I mean, you, you're going to do, you're going to be focused on doing what? Getting assets. So either whether you acquire them through real estate or create them. Because when we either acquire them or create them, it's going to produce what? Cash flow and appreciate. Good class. We can leave right now. <laughs> but that's the goal, is for you to be ownership minded, and not for you only be ownership minded, but your children and your grandchildren to be what? Ownership minded. They, they had this, this thing going on. I haven't seen too much of it, but I've seen it more in the South. And what they were saying is they had a movement called Don't Sell Grandma's House. And you know, heard that, that movement, they were talking about don't sell grandma's house. So, when, so what was happening is when grandma passed away because we weren't, come on now, ownership minded. We weren't ownership minded. And because we weren't ownership minded, we sold the house. And when we sold the house, we lost this thing called asset. That's going to produce cash flow and appreciation. Check this out. Not only for us, but for the next generation. <laughs> My Bob don't start like that. You're trying to put me in the other section I ain't trying to go to. I'm in business tonight. But we, but we didn't understand this. I understand this. My dad, many of you guys know my dad passed in August. Yeah, August 17th, he passed. Well, he, he, what, what he left behind, my father was very, dude, he was very ownership minded. Very ownership minded. He, owned a, he was a barber from New, in New Haven, Connecticut for 50 plus years. Um, but I grew up in uh, real estate, right up in, in, and around him. And when he left, he left uh, me and my, our family, two paid off properties. Why? Because he was what? Ownership minded. So we've got to be what? Ownership minded. Because if we can acquire or create, I, I, I like to do both. Acquire or create these assets. It's going to produce cash flow and appreciate. And not only will you be able to eat, eat off them, but your people around you be able to eat off them. So you got to, so we got to train the next, ourselves first and then the next generation about, hey man, this, how do, we, how do we successfully pass this on to the next generation? Because that's what it's about. It's not only about you getting it, it's about how do we keep, because I, I would say this, how do we purchase it? How do we keep and maintain it? But then next, next, how do we pass it on to the next generation? Right? Because that's what, that's what wealthy families do. They pass it on to two and three. Uh, I, I read a book, this is some years ago, um, about the Rockefellers. And they were talking about the Rockefellers, why they still have money in their family and other rich families don't. And one of the things that uh, the father said was he didn't give them money. What he did was he felt he set up a family bank or family trust. And so you just can't come and say, hey, uh, because I'm a Rockefeller, I'm, I'm entitled to $10 million. No, 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 no. What you had to do was come to them with like a business plan of this is what you want to do. And what they would do is they would give you money based off your business plan. Or they would give you money based off you going to school or doing so, setting up a nonprofit. But they, but they didn't just give all the get the money out. Because he was like, look, this is this this thing that we built is a what, an asset, and this asset will give us what, cash flow, and the cash flow will appreciate. <laughs> so it got to be ownership mind. And number three is this, and we'll open up the floor for for questions. Is this, this helping y'all out at all? Is it helpful? Okay. All right. And then number three is, now this is the, sh the ship method. The secret sauce of building wealth. So we know number one is stewardship. Number two is ownership. The last one is entrepreneurship. Now what, what does entrepreneur, entre, uh, entrepreneurship teach us? Entrepreneurship, I ain't even trying to spell it out. Y'all yeah. know what it is. <laughs> The big thought on the entrepreneurship is this. It's about creating this thing called 
Uh, but let me define, let me def give my definition of entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship is when you're able to sell goods and services at a profit. That, that, that's what you're trying to do in entrepreneurship. You're trying to sell goods and services uh, at, at a profit, or I like to say solving problems for people at a profit. That's what entrepreneurship is. Now, as we talk about this, a lot of us have been trained not to be entrepreneurs. Baby, you better get that, that safe job. And dude, ain't nothing, and, and, and to have a safe job is not to have your hands on somebody, your future on somebody else. And particularly now, you know, back in the day when they were telling us that, they, they stayed at a company for 20, 30, 40 years and got a pension and was having halfway all right. That ain't, our, that ain't us. Most of us change jobs three, and four, three, four, and five times during the lifetime. You, you know what I mean? So, that, so what worked for them is obsolete for you and I, and they sure ain't going to work for our kids. Got it? But what entrepreneurship knows is this. Entrepreneurship takes advantage of this thing called leverage. Ownership does too, but entrepreneurship takes this thing called leverage. It takes advantage of this thing called systems. Those two words are key in under entrepreneurship. I gotta have leverage and I gotta have systems. Systems allow me to do more things than I could do on my own. I heard a guy say, one of the guys I've, I've talked to you about following, I don't know if you follow him as I get his name is Myron Golden, uh, one of my favorite people to follow. Former pastor, um, big time entrepreneurship guy, but one of the things he talked about is this. I love this quote about leverage. He said, you can make up with leverage what you lack in skill. Ooh, that's good. <laughs> You can make up with leverage what you lack in skill. This earlier summer, I did a video, and I, and I titled it, How to Make Jalen Brown Money. Y'all know who Jalen Brown is? Most of y'all know who Jalen Brown is. Jalen Brown is plays for the Boston Celtics. Those of y'all, y'all know who Jalen Brown is? <laughs> Talking to the TV people. But Jalen Brown just signed the, the largest NBA contract. I think he made, I don't know, 295 million or something like that. And then that, actually this baseball player, uh, the Japanese do 700 million. 700, dude, that's almost a billion dollars to hit a baseball. Have mercy. And now he's now this is we'll stick a note. But we're, we're, this is a business class now anyway. But what we're talking about, and uh, I'm also doing on Thursday night. If you guys are free, I got a, a person coming to talk at taxes. It's a Zoom call, so if if you want to be involved in that, just let me know. But what he did was he struck his contract where he's going to get paid, going to get paid two million dollars a year over the next ten years, and the other six hundred and so it'd be twenty million. So the other six hundred and eighty million he's deferring to after he, uh, I think, retires. Oh, he real smart. Did the same thing. Yep, same thing. Yeah, this was years ago. This is, uh, thank you. Uh, still, he, he, he gets a million dollars. I think I, I, I forgot the date was, but he deferred a lot of his money, which is a whole, dude, that's a, that, the next person I'm going to have coming is, 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 is going to be a tax discussion because we need to know how to get better at taxes because taxes really is your business biggest expense. When, when you look at the amount of money you pay in tax and the different type of taxes you pay, uh, you know, you really got to be skilled at that. But entrepreneurship deals with this thing called what? Leverage. And what did I say? You can make up what you lack in skill with leverage. So even though Jalen Brown makes 300 million, do you know you can make 300 million dollars if you had enough leverage? Now some of you are, oh God, Pastor, I'll be happy. Dexter, you'd be happy not even making that amount of money. But it's possible if we learn how to use this thing called what? Leverage, and we learn how to use this thing called systems. Any of you ever own, any of you ever bought anything from Amazon? And the answer is yes. Better question: Who hasn't bought something from Amazon, right? We at least all of us at, at one point in time. Well, what now? People hate upon Jeff Bezos. He's making a lot of money. Well, he's done what? He's learned. He's learned how to tap into what leverage, and definitely learn how to learn how to use systems. I was telling somebody last week. I said we were. Coming back, PK and I, my wife and I were coming back from, oh God, I forgot, where we've been, we've been all over the place this year. But we were coming back from Maryland, our trip into the spring, we were in Maryland at the conference. And I had my shoulder bag 
with my suits in it, and I think I ripped it. And I said, I need another bag. So I get on my phone in, in the airport. Do, 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 do. You know, Amazon, two or three things. Matter of fact, what's I think that like two. Boom, boom. Cause I got Amazon Prime. Boom, boom, hit it. It beat us home. It beat me when we got to the house, Jerome. It was uh, my my thing was on the porch. I'm like, dang, Jeff Bezos got it like that. <laughs> well, he has what systems? He has what leverage? And when you have leverage, you have systems, dude. You could you 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 build this thing called what wealth. Uh, end with this. This guy by the name of J. Paul Getty said this. He was, he, he was big. Matter of fact, most of you probably heard Getty Gas. That's, but he had a saying, is, I would rather make 1% um, of 100 man's efforts as opposed to 100% of mine. See, because we've been trained, I'm saying it again, I would rather make 1% of 100 man's efforts as opposed to 100% of my own efforts. That's how entrepreneurship teaches you how to think. So, so it's not about, well, we've been trained, what do you want to be when you grow up? Well, I want to be a for little, little kid. I want to be a fireman, uh, and I want to play for the Patriots at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's how little kid, I want to do that, and I want to do that because, you're, because your mind hasn't been shut down to possibilities at that point. You all lose. You, I can do whatever. I, go, I want to go to, I want to be an astronaut. And the president at the same time, which is old another class, which is a good thing because that's your, because you, you got to be able to imagine and see some stuff I'm talking to you about tonight. And many of us have, have shut down our thinking and our imagination button. And so you become realistic and think $70,000 is a lot of money and $80,000 ain't nothing to seize that. But let me say this, if you use leverage and systems, you can make that in a month. Ooh, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? So entrepreneurship uses this thing called what? Leverage and systems. And when they use leverage, they use systems. They build wealth. Now, this is what I personally believe. I believe these first two, if you just match these first two, you, you, you can build wealth. Because I don't believe everybody is meant to be an entrepreneur. I don't. Now, I do believe everybody's meant to do these first two well, skillfully handle your money, and, and, if you buy, and if you buy assets, you build wealth just off those two alone. Because I believe it's something called callings. Some of you may be called to be in the classroom. Well, you ain't going to try to run no full-time business because you're called to be a teacher. Or you're called to be a politician. That's cool. Or whatever. God, God help you, but if you are. <laughs> but but there, are things, uh, there are callings that people have, correct? Well, if you have a calling to do, you know, there's some people who call to be uh, uh, in, 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 in military. That's fine, whatever your calling is. But if you operate in these two right here, you still can build well. And then there are some of us who want, who want to be what? Entrepreneurs. Now, how does this tie to real estate? After that, how does this tie to real estate? Now, have you seen real estate cut through all of these somewhat on some level? Because this is a real estate wealth creation class, right? Say yes. yes. See, real estate allows you to tie into the last two, in my opinion. It allows you to, 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 to acquire an asset, right? And we always talk about the four wealth generators in real estate up here. We talk about number one is cash flow, right? Did we, did we tell you about cash flow already? We talked about that in this class, right? That's cash flow. The number two is this thing called appreciation, right? In real estate, you got two types of appreciation. You have natural and you have forced. What's natural appreciation? Well, we all experience natural appreciation. You bought your house for X, Y, Z, and you had it for X amount of years, and it's worth a lot more than it was when you bought it, correct? That's called natural appreciation. What's forced appreciation? Forced appreciation is you, you, you buy something and you improve it. So you, you know, put in another bathroom, update it, uh, add it, put an addition on, whatever else. You, you add, you, somehow you improve it, and because you have improved it, you have appreciated it, and it's worth more. 
right? And then the third thing is this thing called what? Y'all don't know. I'm about to tell you. Say it again, Ma. No, no, no. This, this, we're talking real estate investing right now. Yeah. Uh, tax benefits. Do you know real estate has phenomenal tax benefits? Like I said, turn, turn them, uh, I'm, I'm gonna give you the information for that. But tax benefits, uh, and I, a, a, if I named a certain person, and I'm not a political person, but whatever else, but y'all know who probably know who I'm talking about, right? Okay, y'all can read between the lines. Big time, head of our country, and was big in the real estate, right? And they were asking me, he said, you didn't pay taxes when you were X, Y, and Z. And he said, you know why I didn't pay taxes? Because I'm smart. <laughs> He said, I didn't pay taxes because I'm smart. Listen. <laughs> uh, no, no, they ain't going to jail because they know what to do. Now, there are some folks who are not paying any taxes. They are going to jail. You're right on that. But folks who know the tax code, that's what you got to do. In order to play the tax game right, you got to know the what? Tax code. Um my wife and I bought backgammon a couple of months ago. We ain't played it yet, but we at least got it. I ain't never played backgammon, so any of y'all play backgammon out there? Okay, so if so if I went and played with Monica, Monica would probably kick my behind and play backgammon. Because she knows the rules, I don't. She would win. Got it? Now check this out. We're not winning the money game because in many respects, we don't know the rules. And one of the rules you gotta learn is. How do, I, how do I get this thing called what? Benefit. Tax benefits. What are the tax benefits of real estate? One of them is this thing called depreciation. Y'all heard of depreciation? Y'all know what depreciation is? Sort of, kind of. <laughs> See, because depreciation has two terms. One is when something goes down in value, but when it talks about taxes, uh, depreciation is cool because, and, I, and I, let me just as my disclaimer, I ain't a tax person, but I know a little bit about this. When you buy a piece of property, uh, you can depreciate it over X amount of year. I think at this point it, it changes, the tax laws change from time to time, and by the time y'all see this, who knows what it would be. But right now, it's you can write off, um, you, you, you can de depreciate on your property. It's really what they call a phantom expense. It's not a real expense, but what they're saying is your property is going to, depreciate over, just say, a 27-year period, and you write that off on your taxes. So how does that help you? Now, that helps you because just say you are a W-2 earner, which means you got a regular job, right? Do you know that a regular job, uh, as an employee, you are taxed the most out of anybody? So what do people do? They... W-2, high, high income earners, what they want to do is they want to buy real estate because they want the tax benefits because they can write off this thing called depreciation and depreciation offsets their income. So just say I made half a million dollars in, 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 in my, just say on whatever I do, but I got this real estate over here that's depreciation, I can, I can offset my income with the depreciation. Y'all looking at me like I got four heads. Does that make sense? <laughs> They're like, huh? <laughs> and then now, and that's just one of them. You know, there's some people who know a lot more about this than I do. Then they have something called cost segregation stuff like me. It's it's, it's that's what I say. It's a whole really what you have to do, and I have to do this because we're in the process of doing this too. You've got to get someone who knows not only taxes and CPAs and all that, but they got to know something about real estate in order to help you really to maximize how to keep more of your money in your pocket. Got it? And then the fourth one is this, is uh, debt pay down. Now, if you, if you bought my course, you all this is in there. I think uh, Angela did. I don't know if anybody else in there bought it in there, but if you want to buy my course, I talk a little bit about this. Um, if you go to DexterBJenkins.com under services, you can, you can pick, I think it's like $197, whatever it is. Um, <clears throat> be a good Christmas gift for you. <laughs> Excuse me, not debt freedom. Excuse me, debt pay down. Sorry, I'm sorry, I said debt freedom. Debt pay down. Now, what is debt pay down? Debt pay down is this. How many own a um, rental property out there? 
couple of you do. One, I got a couple people in, in the audience, three, four, right? So, uh, and the people who are in your property, they're either paying all or some of that mortgage. Is that correct? Right. So that is what they call debt pay down. Meaning you own the, we say real estate is what? An asset. So real estate is an asset, right? But you own the asset, but who's paying for the asset? The tenant. I don't, this is what I hear all the time. I don't want to be a landlord. Well, you want to be bro? That's the better question. But now, are, are there some headaches with it? Let me help you. Yes. I'm going to say that one more time. Yes. <laughs> but, and we know this, anything worthwhile will be some headaches at times. Raising kids, being married, whatever. All, at that point in time, now you, you may be sitting with your spouse and you ain't going to say, you ain't going to say nothing too, too, too cool here. <laughs> But I mean, but, <laughs> but anything worthwhile, every now and then there's gonna be a pain in the behind. I'm, that's just what it is, right? But that's why we, we, we gotta understand what we're doing. So when you do get that pain in behind situation, like, okay, I know why I'm doing this. So I can persevere through all the garbage and stuff I got to deal with because I understand, listen, I'm using this to build what? Cash flow, I'm using this to deal with appreciation. I'm, I'm using this to get the tax benefits. I'm doing this to, to, to get the debt paid down. So that's how real estate ties into, in my opinion, all three of them. Ties into stewardship, because I know I do some things to get it. Ties into ownership, because you know how to buy assets and deal, ties into entrepreneurship. Because what you want to do is, what we don't do a lot of times is this, and, I, and, and what we do, we don't see this as a business. We see this as sort of like a hideaway, well, you know, I own something. No, 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 you, you, you need to see this. I, when, when I talk to people, I, I say I'm a real estate entrepreneur. And that's what you are. You, if, if you, got a, you got one property, I don't care if it's your main house, it, you are a real estate entrepreneur because you are using this as a what? A business. And you got to treat it as a what? A business. And if you treat it as a business, it will treat you. It will give you the profits as we learn how to get better at it. Make sense? And that is how the SHIP method, S-H-I-P. <laughs> That's how the SHIP method is the secret sauce to building wealth. Now give me a round of applause. Thank you. Yay. <laughs> Questions? Comments? I don't know how much more time we have left because I don't have my phone on me. They, they'll have to tell me how much more time we have left. 15 minutes, perfect. Thank you, Dick. Any questions out there, comments off of what we've talked about so far? Uh, the microphone is right there. White pass it. Equity in your right. home, that could be used as leverage, correct? Oh, thank you, Eric, for saying that. Now, people have a hard time releasing their equity. <laughs> Somebody said, yeah, that's true. <laughs> but equity should be, to be, uh, let me say this. <clears throat> let me tell you, equity should be used intelligently, so you don't want to be frivolously going out there and buying crazy stuff. But just say, because um, I, I know and I'm, I'll just use me for example. I know some of the things I've got going on. Once some things go through, we'll have about 700000 in equity in our properties. So $700,000 in equity, just say if I had $700,000 in a bank account and I didn't do anything with it, would that be wise? No. no. So what equity is in many respects is dead money. So what you got to do is use piece of it, not to go buy a boat, not to go to Cancun, uh, not to do stuff like that. What you want to do is you want to take some of that equity. How much did I say? Some of it, right? And you want to purchase an asset. 
that's when equity works for you. See, because one, and this is a whole nother class. See, and, and <clears throat> what you have to do is understand the difference between debt and funding. Because we've been trained, I want to be debt free, I want to be debt free, I want to be debt free. And I got my own per thought on that. But a person who's under the bridge is debt free. So debt freedom isn't, the, isn't, isn't what you're looking for. Wealth is what you're looking for. Got it? So, so, so we got to shift our thinking. And it takes time to do that because we've been, I want to pay a house, I want to pay a house, and I'm not saying you shouldn't. It's, it's a personal decision. But you got to think about, hey, if I got a half million dollars sitting in equity, that's dead money. Take part of that and buy an asset that's going to do what? Cash flow and appreciate. So not only do I have equity still, but I have equity, but now I got an asset. That, well, that's how my wife and I got started. We took some equity out of our house and we, that's how we got out. That's how we started our career. So I'm not telling you something I didn't do. We've done that. And I said, oh, we got all this equity in this house. Because in Boston, the, pre, the properties went up like this, right? Then do, we ain't doing the, we, I mean, we painted the house, that was it. And it went up. Okay, so now I got this equity. So why am I let, letting this sit here? It's dead money. I wouldn't let, I wouldn't let a lot of money sit in, my, in a checking account or a savings account, right? But the key thing is this. You have to get, I'll put it down here, educated. So my wife and I weren't willy-nilly with it. We got educated first. We went and took a course and did some other stuff and got under some mentors who could teach us what to do. And then... We took some of the equity and got started. Well, I'm serving as your educator on some respect. Many of you called me and say, hey, hey, Petey, or hey, Dexter, I'm thinking about this. What are, you know, so I was, you know, some, some people I've had a former relationship with, many of y'all don't. You, you hit me up on Facebook, email me or text me, and I answer any questions you have or whatever else. But so you want to take, get educated so that you can use an asset. So you, you can't be afraid to use your equity is what I would say. Or you can't be afraid, maybe you got a 401k or something or whatever, else. something that's, that's stagnant and sitting there, what you want to do is you want to put it to you. Listen, one of, one of the keys of building wealth is you got to put everything that's all of your valuable assets to, to work. Some of you are Bible readers in here, and I'm not, this is not really, this is more of a business class, but you know, we are on a Christian network, so I can use this, this story, 2 Kings chapter four, verse one through seven. The prophet asked you, he said, what do you have in your house? And she had, she had all, all our guys a little bit of oil. So she took the oil and he told her to do, he told her to do two things, right? Boy, y'all get some good stuff tonight, boy. I'm telling you. I ain't even charging y'all for this, Jerome. <laughs> he told her, what asset do you have in your house? She said, all I got a little bit of oil. And then he told her this, go sell. See, many of us are scared of both these words. I don't want to sell anything. Do you know that that's the, that's the fastest path to wealth is learn how to do what? To sell? And we've been trained, particularly us, black folk. Now, there, we got other people who are watching this, but I'm talking about that's who I do most of the time. Black folk, we don't like to sell stuff. We buy stuff all the time. We are great consumers. So as opposed to you buying it from somebody else, go, 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 he said, go sell. So when she, matter of fact, he told her to do two things. Number one, he told her, go in debt, go what? Go borrow. Yes. Go borrow. Go do what? Borrow. She borrowed. Then he told her to do what? Go sell. We afraid to borrow and go sell. I don't want to sell nothing. I don't want to sell. Well, you want to be broke then. Excuse my excitement over there. <laughs> but listen, you got to get comfortable with this. There's a language that many of us weren't taught and is happening around us and in many respects to us. Until you open your eyes up, the man told her to go borrow. Then when she went and sold, she became profitable, right? And then she went off and paid off her debt. See, what we're trying to do is we're trying to pay off debt without selling. And it takes a long time to pay off debt without what? Selling. It takes 30 years. 
But if you learn how to sell and you make profit, you get profitable faster, now you can pay off the debt. If you want to be debt free, cool, go ahead, that's you. That's, I mean, that's a personal decision as to how you want to handle your finances. But the way to speed it up is you got to learn how to do what? Sell. Thank you for that question, Eric. You, put, you took me right where I wanted to go. How many more second minutes we got, baby? Oh, six minutes. All right. I, I can take one more quick question if it's a quick one. And if not, we could talk offline anyway because they're just watching us on TV. All right. So, you know, we'll, we'll end that right there. <laughs> Two things I want to announce. Uh, April 27th, 2024 is our second Wealth Creation Summit. Do make sure you are there. Last year we had about a hundred some odd people. Uh, many, many were there. And, 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 was, was there? Jerome was there. As you got when you got to think about town. Uh, Monica was there. Vanessa was there. My Barbara was there. Antoinette was there. Was it? Was it a good conference? Yes. yes. Very good conference. So you want to make sure. And this year is going to be even better. Even I got lined up my guests, lined up my sponsors now. So put that in um, in your calendar. I think what, what we'll do is we'll probably open it up for early registration in January sometime. Um, but you, you want to make sure that you are there for that. It's going to be right there in Canton. And so those of you who are there watching us on, uh, on uh, Digitalville out there in, in TV, make sure that you do that. And the other thing I told you guys about, if you want to get involved in that, uh, I'm, I'm doing a, uh, hosting a, a, I guess we call it a, a, a webinar tomorrow, excuse me, Thursday night, and it's talking about how to, how to, how to reduce actually taxes. So if you want to be involved in that, uh, what I'll do is I'll have my barber actually send out an email. And so uh, well, I'll have to talk to the person tomorrow and figure out how to get that done. But uh, she specializes. She, she stalked me on LinkedIn, and then we had a conversation. I said, well, what I want to do is I want to make sure that my people are getting information on how to reduce their taxes, in particular in the area of real estate, because that's one of her specialties. She specializes work with entrepreneurs and people who are big in the real estate, which you guys are. And will be, correct? correct? So you gotta do is you gotta plan for your what? Success. So uh, not that I'm knocking any local place, but you can't go to places that end with block and make big money. Y'all, y'all, y'all get it. <laughs> you can't go to the end with block. Uh, the, the people, big time people making big money, they ain't going to end, end with block and stuff like that. No, they 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 getting professionals who can help them reduce their uh, taxable income through real estate. And then our next meeting is the second, um, <coughs> second Tuesday in January, whatever date that is. So this, this meeting is going to be on the, is going from, from here on out will be on the second Tuesday of every month. So I don't know what that next, uh, what is that? I don't know. Who, I don't have my phone. Number. Who has, who is that? January 9th. So our next meeting will be January 9th. And actually, uh, John Felino will be here on that, I ain't doing that one. He'll be doing this one. Um, he's a, he's from uh, I think Cross Country Mortgage. So what I, so what I want him to do is talk about some of the new rules through FHA and all that, and, you know, and, and talk about how we can use that. Cause now last month we had Rob Nichols. He was talking about hard money, and then I said, well, well, what you got to do is have a partnership between hard money and traditional lending because what needs to happen is a lot of times if you go in with hard money, then what you got to do is if you decide to keep it, you got to finance it out of hard money into traditional if, if you decide to keep it. So I think that's all I announced. I'm getting the sign to wrap it up. So let's give it a round of applause. Yay! We will see you guys on January 9th. Uh, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and look forward to seeing you guys in the new year. Bye-bye. All right. <laughs>